Whether we notice it or not, geography is the key factor in distinguishing cultures. When we were first introduced to geography in school, all the emphasis was laid upon how big and widespread India is. Through the years, we were frequently reminded of India's unity in diversity and how its varying landscapes spanning the Himalayan mountains in the north and the vast Indian Ocean around the southern peninsula along with central deserts, plains and plateaus determine this. Along with diverse geographical conditions come varying climates, conditional crops and ultimately regionally governed lifestyles. Amid such differences, unity is a little overhyped, but we Indians are very sensational people. We take much pride in our regional backgrounds and the defining characters that set us apart from each other. We have distinctive foods and rituals, and so much so that even amidst our similarities, we infuse differences. For starters, religion is a big thing in India. With almost a billion Hindus in the country, one would think this would be the ultimate at uniting the nation. However, Hinduism is practiced in such a variety of ways that more barriers are introduced. Thinking back, the only common cause we Indians could relate to was colonization of the country. By the time we managed to rid ourselves of British rule, we had developed a certain fondness towards a pastime they left behind, cricket. Touted as the gentleman's game, cricket captivated the hearts of the entire nation, so much so that we even made a movie suggesting some part of the fight for independence was won by defeating the English at their own game. Personally, I'm not a very big fan of cricket myself. However, when India won the Cricket World Cup back in 2011, I witnessed one of the most euphoric atmospheres ever. And this experience defined my understanding of cultural heritage. That night, every individual in the university gathered in the central quadrangle and celebrated this victory till the early hours of the morning. This was the first time in my four years at college that I saw people put aside their differences and rejoice in something that broke down barriers. And so I came to realize the deep Indian sentiment involved in referring to cricket as a religion. For all Indians seem to have found a god in Sachin. Sachin Tendulkar, an Indian cricketer, is widely acknowledged as one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. Besides giving Indians a reason to unite as one nation, as a brotherhood. And if one man who did wonders with a piece of wood shaped as a bat managed to bring together a country of one of the world's largest populations amidst all differences, then maybe he is a god. Divine or not, personally I believe he is the most eligible candidate to be put in a time capsule as a mark of the great nation of India. Because to represent a country of such great and diverse culture and tradition is to be Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. I won't explain why statistically this choice is justified, because that's just a web page away. But in a country so full of gods, for people to unanimously pronounce a new one in a mere cricketer, well, that should count for a lot.